Hi, Steve and Gina Wintermantle coming to you live from our back porch here in Tarit, South Sudan. Where do you get your hope? If you're a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I trust you'd say, well, Steve, I get my hope in Christ. He is my hope. But for the vast majority of people here in the villages of South Sudan, they get their hope from a little baggie, like the one I'm holding there in my hand. Now, I'm holding a bag of water there. But if this were out in the villages of uh, South Sudan, that would be a bag of pure grain alcohol, because that is where so many people here in this land get their hope from drinking alcohol to excess and then getting drunk and spending most of the day uh, in a drunken state, even mothers with children, so the children go unfed. So a couple of years ago, Gina and I became convinced the Lord was opening the doors for us to begin what we are now calling the Kingdom Builder School. And the goal of this school is to equip South Sudanese believers to be missionaries who are messengers of hope to the unreached villages of South Sudan and beyond. This journey really started for us uh, back in 2017 when we were discussing as a family whether we should be moving to South Sudan. Was the Lord calling us to do this? So we loaded up our family and took a short vision trip to Tarit, South Sudan. And while we were there, we had a very quick look at what life here would be like. We stopped in Kenya so that the kids could see what uh, Rift Valley Academy, the boarding school was like. And then we headed home. We prayed for 40 days and then we came together as a family and we decided that yes we did believe that the lord was calling us to move to east africa so in uh september we loaded up again we dropped hazel off at rift valley academy where she began her junior year in high school and the rest of us headed into Tarit, south sudan we spent a year acclimating, learning culture, learning language, learning what it meant to live here. And then uh, we're really seeking how we could best invest our time for the Lord here. In October of 2019, Steve was invited to join a group of local pastors who were praying together. As that group continued praying together, they really sensed that the Lord was calling the local churches to be sending out missionaries to the unreached people in South Sudan and beyond. And that there was also a need for a training or Bible school to come to Tarit. So in March of 2021, we trained up a group of pastors to become leaders for the Kingdom Builder School. In so many ways, we have seen God go ahead of us or before us in establishing the Kingdom Builder School. And the most important way that we have seen this is by God bringing together these four men who meet every Friday and Gene and I meet with them for prayer and we've been meeting together now since the time uh, for a few years and um, uh, we continue to meet with them to build our unity and to build uh, on the foundation of establishing the Kingdom Builders School. You can see there in the lower right hand corner that the leaders are from four pastors from four tribes, four denominations and from two countries serving Jesus together. So the Kingdom Builder School students uh, that we are seeking to come to the school, and we are now in our second year of the Kingdom Builder School, they are called by God to go to unreached villages. They are sent to Kingdom Builder School by local churches, and preferably these are high school graduates who are proficient in English. English is the official language here in South Sudan. And uh, when the students come, uh, when they complete Kingdom Builder School, they are sent out by their local churches to the unreached villages in South Sudan and beyond. This is our uh, current uh, student and staff for this year. We have about eight students who are currently working on uh, graduating from this year. And we were very blessed this year to have two women join us uh, that you see in the picture there. And then we also asked after we got started, one of the young ladies who had to drop out last year due to too many commitments, she came back and joined us as well. So we're really excited to her, have her finish as well this year. So there are four key values that uh, we are building the Kingdom Builder School and Kingdom Centers, which I'll talk to you about in just a moment, uh, building upon. And first of all, it's incarnational. And that is that we want the students to go and live among the people that they're seeking to reach. 
in John 1.14, we read that Jesus came and dwelt among the people he was seeking to reach. And that's what we are hoping to see in our uh, kingdom builders who are sent out. Secondly, we want them to build relationships, relationships that are truth infused with the word of God and to make disciples in as those people move from uh, unbelief to belief. And thirdly, uh, we want this to be reproducible. So we utilize uh, ministry methods that can be uh, easily reproduced going from village to village and uh, helping them to do that very readily. And finally, sustainable. We want to develop ministry methods which require as few outside resources as possible. So it's very adaptable to that local village setting. You can see here, this is a map uh, primarily of the state in which we live, uh, which is Eastern Equatoria State, kind of there in the middle. You can see our town of Tarit and then to the east is Kiala, to the southwest is Imorak, and to the west then is Lofrika. And these are the three locations that we are in the development phase of establishing as kingdom centers. And kingdom centers are much like uh, traditional mission stations, except that these kingdom centers will have uh, primarily people from South Sudan who will be living in these kingdom centers, being the missionaries, reaching out to the villages around those areas. And they won't be dependent upon Wi-Fi and uh, solar and vehicles like uh, virtually all of the Western missionaries are here currently in South Sudan. These folks will live like South Sudanese. They will live in uh, mud and grass huts and they will uh, grow much of their own food. And so it's a highly sustainable model. This is Abundio. Abundio was born in Lofrica. He married a young lady from Lofrica and started their family. And in 2015, fighting broke out in the area. So Abundio moved his whole family to a refugee camp in Uganda. There the children were able to be in school and be in a more secure environment. Abundio didn't know the Lord at that time. When he uh, landed in the camp, he became ill at some point, very sick, and while he was in the hospital, he heard the Lord telling him that he needed to go to church. So he got connected to a local church in the camp. A young man started discipling him, and Abundio uh, decided to follow Jesus. He then ended up in a discipleship program, and he really sensed that the Lord was calling him to take the message of the gospel back to his own kingdom. So in 2021, Abundio left his family there in the camp while the kids were still in school and he moved back. And then he heard about kingdom builders when he arrived here. He moved, he actually decided to move out to the village and then he either biked or hiked in from Lofrica to Tarit for the training. So he completed the training with us in kingdom builders. He also uh, was able to become a teacher while he was uh, during this uh, few months that he was with us. And so now he is teaching in the village in the primary school, and he is establishing a small body of believers there and doing discovery Bible study with them. We were able to help his wife and children move back uh, to Lofrica with him last July. And so they are all there together as a family now. and. Uh, Abundio continues to grow this small flock that he is overseeing. This is Juma. Juma is a very good friend of ours who has helped us out many times, uh, watching out for our household and our animals and our plants while we are away. Uh, but Juma was born in the village of Imurak. And at some point in his education, when he was in high school, he ended up in the Kakuma refugee camp for a, uh, a couple of years. He finished his high school there and then he moved back to Tarit about the same time that we arrived here. And he really had a passion to reach out to his own people in Murak. So he started uh, visiting there on Sundays and doing some discovery Bible study there as well. Juma is currently in uh, Kingdom Builder School this year. He is also just now finishing up his teacher training that he has been doing for three years. So Juma's hope is that he will be able to go out and teach in the primary school and continue uh, to disciple and build up the church uh, that is in Morak. 
And this is our good friend Gildo. Gildo is currently a one of the Kingdom Builder School leaders. He is also a pastor at a church here in Torit. But it has been uh, something God has placed on Gildo's heart for a very long time is to return to his home village of Kiala. And Kiala is about 40 minutes east of Torit. And it is one of the hardest places that we're aware of to uh, for the gospel to take root because so many have been trying for so long and no churches have been established at this time. And there are very few, if any, believers in Kiala. But Gildo has a heart to go. And so we are praying for someone to go with him to Kiala where he will um, uh, is praying that he, he'll be able to teach in the school there also and uh, find some teenage boys who want to do residential discipleship, and then they'll share life together, much following the Jesus model of discipleship, and uh, be doing Discovery Bible Study groups for children, youth, and adults. And very quickly, Discovery Bible Study is just simply sharing a story from the Word of God, and then asking some basic questions to help people to think for themselves. Questions like, what do we learn in this story about God? What do we learn about people and God's plan for people? And then what is there in this story to obey? Because we're trying to help people to see that uh, it is essential for them to obey the word of God. And then hopefully at some point, step over the line from unbelief to faith and to following Christ. Also, we're hoping that Gildo will be able to help uh, introduce some new farming methods there in Kiala as well. As we were progressing with Kingdom Builders, um, our students are able to read well. Uh, and we realize that we are hoping that they are going out to places where there are people who can't read. And as we kind of prayed through this and tackled this issue, uh, we were connected with a lady who had done some work among Taposa and Turkana in training them how to put Bible stories in their languages onto SD cards so that those could be shared orally. So we had this training in October of 21. We brought together five different language groups um, that are represented here and we train them on how to make the stories and record them so that we can take these out, uh, send them out with our kingdom builders. They can be used in a variety of ways to work with people who can't read. So the next phase of development for the Kingdom Builder School is the establishment of the Kingdom Builders Demonstration Farm. And the purposes for this farm are uh, at least four of them, including a learning center to teach uh, new and innovative farming methods and introduce new plants and animals to students that they can then take with them to the villages where they'll be going as Kingdom Builders. Secondly, uh, we want to show uh, and demonstrate innovative farming methods and introduce new plants and animals in the local community here in Tarit, because uh, the primary people group here around Tarit are Latuco. Traditionally, they have been uh, cattle keepers or pastoral people, and so there is still much for them to learn uh, about agriculture here in this area. Number three, we want to provide an opportunity for Kingdom Builder students to work and to earn an income. We pay, a, a, we charge a very modest school fee for the students to uh, pay to be a part of the school. And we want them, we don't want the uh, school fee to be a hindrance for students to attending. So we'll tell them if you do not have the money, that's okay, come and work. And then uh, we will allow you to use that money to pay your school fees and to provide some income for them as well. And then finally, uh, we are hoping that long term, this farm would be able to provide at least some uh, income to help support the ministry of Kingdom Builder School. So this is a picture taken here in our compound where we live. And you can see uh, other than the hedges, we have planted everything you see there, along with many other plants here on our compound. But some of the plants that can be sent out to the villages with the Kingdom Builder students, you can see there, see them over there to the right. And there are many vegetables, fruits, and uh, different kinds of trees that can be used for production of timber and charcoal that uh, can be sent out. And also, very importantly, the one at the bottom is Lablat, which is an amazing plant that helps build up the soil. I mentioned Kiala. We went there for a visit, and we were told that the soil around the center part of the village was very poor. Well, Lab Lab is something that could be planted there that would really help to improve the soil by putting back organic matter and to put nitrogen back into the soil. Well, we are training up our kingdom builders uh, to go out and make disciples. 
uh, along with uh, being able to do plant agriculture, we wanted them to be able to help people with animal husbandry. So one of the uh, programs that we've been doing here in Tarit is uh, there's a group of young men from the churches that have joined me and they uh, we go out and do vaccinations within the Tarit community. And what we are vaccinating for primarily is Newcastle disease. It's a disease in chickens that pretty much wipes out uh, all of the chickens when it comes through. And it comes through South Sudan here. It can come through once or twice a year. And we really need to vaccinate every three or four months to stay ahead of it. So there's about six young men that help with this and we go out and they've been building some relationships in the community because we go back to the same households for vaccination. We also try to uh, share with people um, the reason that we're doing this is because of the love of Christ. And then we also pray with them if they have any needs in their household. We hope that this will be a tool uh, that someday we might be able to use in the villages as well, though we have to tackle a few obstacles uh, such as how to get vaccines out and then how to preserve them until they are used. I've also been able to bring in some improved varieties of chickens from Kenya. This is the naked neck chicken, which uh, may look a little bit unusual to you in the U.S., but this chicken actually does very well in uh, tropical climates. Without the feathers on the neck, they're able to dissipate heat a little bit easier. So we've been, I've been bringing these in and hatching them uh, out in the incubator. And then I have done some distribution of the roosters out into the community so that they're crossing in with the indigenous chicken here in South Sudan. And most recently, most recently I've started uh, just uh, passing out fertilized eggs from these chickens so that people can take the eggs from the improved variety chickens, put them under their own hens that are already sitting on eggs, and then uh, be able to incorporate these into their flock and have some better genetics. Then uh, the other addition I've made is bringing in some ducks from Kenya. These were also um, hatched and I am still working on uh, getting them to reproduce well so that they can also um, be given out in the community. I say given out, but really these are usually purchased for a small price. We find that people definitely value the animals when they have actually given something for them, whether it's some type of food item or uh, cash. Um, the reason we really like the duck idea is because these ducks are more resistant to Newcastle disease. And uh, when it comes through, they may get a little bit sick, but they don't die. And so this would be a great way for people uh, to add this into their poultry collection and then uh, just have an additional way to generate protein for their family, either through eggs or through meat. So here are some of the items that we uh, are planning to put on the demonstration farm. Uh, we will need fencing to keep goats and thieves out. Well, we're going to build a modest classroom that will also serve as a church building for a local church in that part of Tarit. Uh, we're going to have student housing, which will be the mud and mud huts or the tukuls. We'll need a latrine, a water well, a chicken barn for Gina to do the chicken projects and teach the students how to uh, care for ch chickens and other poultry. Uh, we're going to get at least one semi-truck container that we can use for storage of seeds and equipment and things like that. Uh, we're going to construct a two-unit guest house for when people come to stay at the farm and a, a, so they'll have a spot where they can be. And then finally, we uh, there is no electricity in Tarit and so we'll need to pro provide solar power for the buildings. So you can see here, uh, this is a photo taken of the land that we are in the process of acquiring. And uh, it is about four acres or about a, a little more than a hectare. And we are now seeking for the Lord to raise up people who want to partner with us through prayer and through financial giving to help make this farm possible. We will need to pay something for the land. We haven't yet heard fully how much, but we hope to hear even this week as we bring this to you in mid-December. And uh, so we'll pay for the land and then begin to build these uh, improvements on the land as well. 
If you uh, would like to pray and consider the possibility of partnering with us, we would very much appreciate that. If you would like to give a gift, you can send it to the Kingdom Builders Ministry Africa, a nonprofit that has been set up in the U.S. And you can see the address there. All gifts are tax deductible. And uh, just to let you know that these special gifts will not go toward our regular ongoing support if you currently support us already. Uh, and if you have any questions about any of this, then you can please email us at uh, the email address that you see there below. So you can see in the lower right hand corner, uh, our dear friend, Pastor Luca Ignacio, and he is a, an amazing man of God, a, a leader here in the church, both in his local church and a, a leader amongst leaders in the churches here in Tarit and even now increasingly in South Sudan. And God has clearly brought him and called him to be the principal of the Kingdom Builder School. He is passionate about seeing South Sudanese believers raised up, sent out, by their local churches, and then taking the gospel and helping making disciples in the villages of South Sudan. And one day I was talking with Luca, and I said, Luca, how many villages are there uh, here in South Sudan where the gospel has not yet been heard? And as you can see by the quote, he said, Steve, there are thousands and thousands of villages where the gospel has not yet gone. A clear presentation of understanding who Jesus is and what he has done for us and how he longs for us to be in a love relationship with him.